Leif Anger wrote a novel called Peace Like a River. I would commend it to you. I, I particularly really enjoyed this novel. There's a character in there named Swede. She's this young girl and she's full of faith, really sturdy and hearty faith. Uh, she reminds me of my sister. In one of her letters, she asks this question to her brother. She says, is it hubris to believe we all live epic lives? Is it hubris, is it prideful to believe we all live epic lives? Conversely, uh, a friend of mine once told me that he would be happy just to be a cog in a machine. That's what he'd be happy as, a cog in the machine. And I've meditated on both of these things as they're kind of, they're kind of opposed to each other or they're different aspects of how we view ourselves and view our own lives. And I think that they're both true. That the Christian, we could say, is called to be an epic cog, to be an epic cog in the machine. Neither is he merely a cog in something as soulless and industrial as a machine, nor is his life an epic centered around himself. The Christian is a member of the body of Christ. He participates in the divine nature. He is grafted into Christ, and it is Christ who is the epic of history. It is Christ who the epic poem of history is about. He is the hero of the epic poem, and you are part of it. You are also written into that epic. You are a line in this epic poem, but your purpose, your line is to bring glory to him, to bring glory to Christ. And then Christ, what he does is he shares his glory with you. And this is not without realizing the station to which you were called and being faithful in that station. St. Paul commands the Thessalonians to aspire to lead a quiet life and to mind your own business and to work with your own hands. And yet the Thessalonians received the gospel, Paul says, not with mere words, but with power. They were part of a church that has been read about in all the churches of the world for 2,000 years. They were ministered to by St. Paul and St. Timothy. So they were part of this epic point in history. John the baptizer says of the Christ, he must increase and I must decrease. And yet Jesus says of John, I say to you, among those born of women, there is no, no one greater than John. John points to Jesus, and then Jesus points right back to John. John gives the glory to God, and then God gives glory back to John. Jesus continues. He continues to bestow glory. He says, yet the one who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he talking of John the Baptist, and that is you, that, are, that is Christians, Christians who have humbled themselves in service of the king. If we were to employ some kind of Aristotelian golden mean for identifying virtue, we might put on one end a tendency to think of your life as the center of history. You are all that it's about. You're the hero of the story. And on the other end, we might consider a tendency to devalue yourself to the point of morbid self-deprecation. And both of these things have aspects of truth to them. The scriptures teach us that you are dirt. You are literally made of dirt. As James Jordan says, you're a dirt bag. God breathes life into you. By the spirit of God, you are made for glory. You're made for glory in Christ. So both of these things are true. We ought to be humble. We ought to learn to be humble. We need to learn contentment in our station, in our calling. There's glory in that. And we need to learn to say that every part of the body is valuable because of Christ and that I need them because we aren't just separate cogs spilled out on the floor, but are constituted together as part of this epic machine, the God machine, the God man, ye epic cogs of glory. This reminds us of our need to confess. 